Hi, I hope you're really well. It's a shame that we can't be all together in the home place, but maybe another time. I'm delighted though to read some poems to you wherever you are in the future. Um, I'm going to read from my book, which is called If All the World and Love Were Young. Before I do, I should say a little bit about it. Um, some years ago, I thought as something of a joke, I guess, that there would be something amusing about writing lots of poems about Super Mario World specifically, uh, something that I am very familiar with and spent a lot of time with as a child. Um, I understand not everybody is as familiar with it as I am. So just to say, Super Mario is a video game character. His lot in life is to move typically left to right uh, through all kinds of fantastic um, uncanny otherworldly landscapes um, and, you know, enjoy himself beset uh, by all kinds of obstacles. Uh, so I thought it would be kind of amusing to uh, to write about these, to write about these places as if they were real landscapes. Um, and when I find myself doing that, I find myself thinking about my childhood and where I grew up in the, in the countryside in rural County Down. And as I started putting all these things together, these differing uh, landscapes, these similar landscapes in some ways, uh, I find myself thinking about my childhood and eventually find myself uh, thinking about my mother who uh, who died some years ago. So in a very roundabout way, my joke, um, as I saw it, about Super Mario World uh, became the, the way that I ended up writing about her death. Um, so there is this very much this sense of, of, of these two worlds happening um, throughout the world of the video game, uh, the real world, um, and a, a speaker who kind of moves between these two places, uh, who is sometimes me, who is sometimes Mario, and sometimes both of us. Um, so it starts with a little note. Um, I'm going to read that note, and then I'm going to read um, a, a handful of poems, largely from the start of this book. So, in the summer of 1998, when I was nine, my mother took a photograph of me playing Super Mario World in the small spare room in our house. My back is to the camera. The television was positioned so it faced out from the corner of the room where the wall met the patio door. To my left, I could see the garden along which a little river ran and, over the fields, a dense forest. To my right, there was the huge block of the television, which was already 15 or 16 years old. My eyes drifted between these two positions. Because of the flash of the camera and the glare of the television screen, it's impossible to tell which of the following levels I'm playing. The Super Nintendo is a 16-bit console. Put simply, 16-bit refers to how much memory the system can process at one time. Yoshi's House These are the days of no letters. The magenta mailbox jitters out of the visible spectrum. Babies chirp in our holly tree. Mountains yield to the foreground. And sadly, again, they're beautiful. My friends scattered in the lowlands. The fire seizes in the grate. The smoke signals across the eaves say all I really mean to say. I have gone to rescue my friends. I'll think of you and you and you. Yoshi's Island One here spotted mountains and cirrus. Here sloping plateau drawn down on carnivorous plants and no sun. Gold by the cherish underground. Fly agaric throbs everywhere with fire plants and dinosaurs. In these days new as tomorrow, there is joy to be recorded. The tender steps in other lands, all the flowers of the garden. My mother winds her camera. The room is spelled with sudden light. A rush of photons at my back. A fair wind from the spectral world. I remember myself being remembered. A little lotus. 
a cross-legged meditant for whom the questions floating in the air are for a future self to voice decades from now, who will return again and again to this room and these moments of watershed. It will be an adventure, I think. It will be an adventure. The future is cannon blasting. Yes, I must have dreamt this. Her voice narrows into dreams of such things. Ships sink at the edge of the world. Yoshi's Island 2 Pixels and bits. Pixels and bits. Their perpendicularity. One of the worlds I live in is as shallow as a pane of glass. The threshold of the window sets a frame around the holly tree. Wild funguses, slimy with dew and toxicity. The rubies of holly berries sing on the branches the robins hide among. And the veins of ivy vines wind around the slumping trunk and boughs, slow berries in the blackthorn on the carcinogenic bracken. Ground souls loiter along the low-dashed wall the daisies loll about. One summer's day, I am summoned home to hear of cells which split and glitch. So haphazardly, someone is called to intervene with poisons drawn from strange and peregrine trees flourishing in distant kingdoms. We take the air in the garden, bitter, with berries and mushrooms, too toxic to eat, where the grass bows in an unexpected breeze. Yoshi's Island 3 Today I climb the Windy Mount, the highest peak in this region. My singular wish was to see what its elevation offered. With one companion, my brother, who is no better or worse than anyone else, I saw blankets of mushroom fields reducible to patchworks, what the bird's eye view must see of farms in Genoa. I went so far up the broken path, I supposed I should almost see the curve of the planet or the whim on which the waves begin. But for the first time in some time, I thought of our father at home, the Sirocco in from the south, turtle doves in the huge wheat fields. Yoshi's Island 4 Salt water everywhere, low tides undulate a flotsam of mines, the archipelago a swim with joyful blue white puffer fish. And in a neighbouring province, Cigarro prowl a feline prowl. The ankle-deep children's pool on the peninsula buoyed us up, aboard a heavy pedalo, the likeness of a giant swan, almost unmanoeuvrable about the tropical island, silly with plastic palms and shale, from whose hollow we called to land, to our mother on the seafront, between the sunstruck artificial pool and the coastal waters who beckons us back to harbour. Since it's August, she begins the idle effacement of dying. The many prickles of needles of many exotic compounds, hormones and corticosteroids, the stiffening of the larynx, mouth the dry of the walk alone into the desert finding there those cactuses, their open arms, and their long, curious shadows. Iggy's Castle My dreams reply the garden has become an ocean of lava, a precinct of spewing tephra, the rock like black honey folding over again impossibly, and yet on a shaky island, Someone stands surrounded by fire, who says to go on without me. So there is a sound in the house when I wake, mice under the moon. My mother, who cannot sleep, halves a bright grapefruit, whose feet, whose toes, whose hands, 
his fingers, his ankles, his head, she says, are on fire. Donut Plains 1 The land of flight, feathers, no birds. Backstop Chuck chucks his knuckleballs. The shrubs are off the Scoville scale. The little house on the border keeps a mantelpiece, a brim with dust, delftware, porcelain knickknacks, sixteen ceramic cows, rowboats in the lake, engraved photographs. The lie of the land is the shape of the north of Ireland, likewise missing a lump from its body, where the lake fills with eels zigzagged from the sargasso like needles of glass, light slowed through sodium. The little house on the east shore of the lake has something in it. The chimney trickles smoke, the hearth interprets chords of sycamore, this is not our house, but its walls are flowered with our images. Us as babies, pink and sleeping, and as children formally posed. In green and red fleeces, zipped up to the chin in any weather. In the questionable fashions of the early 1990s. In the sepia-warmed wedding pictures long before we were born. In our relatives' glowing eyes whose faces are written in light. Donut Ghost House What is there to be afraid of? Whatever moves in the rafters, a sparrow's nest in the chimney stuck with hay and pigeon feathers, a knock, knock, knock on the slate roof is, hello, yourself long ago. And hello, an after image after all, one image pressed to and escaping through another. As the world of the living peers out into the world of the dead, as the aisle is full of noises, as the draft catches the blue door, as its keyholes made of nothing, as the fireplace crackles, and offers the light of the forest. The sparrow leaves its nest of eggs, or maybe the sparrow doesn't. Donut Secret 2 It is winter in the Ulster Hospital, and winter outdoors, and winter in our hemisphere, the tilt of the planet says so. Since she has lost her sense of taste, we have dinner in McDonald's. If I'm going to die, she says, might as well go to McDonald's. The kitchen leaps and chirps and blips, the cryptolect of ICUs, whose automatic song desires no singer's articulation. Her hair is thin under the light, and surgery will be discussed tonight while fleets of gritters salt all the main arterial routes. The country roads we travel home by purple and glisten with frost, under the constellations and the Sagittarian moon. Vanilla Fortress I'm swimming with the coelacanths, rotting in the flooded fortress. The unbeautiful things propel themselves in flat trajectories. So many years we have missed you, little fish, little Lazarus, fossil king of the underbite. Not that you knew you were missing. They will not see me swimming here, the darkest fathoms of the keep, where spikes are falling from the roof and bone machines roam dismally among spine-topped anemones marauding on the castle floor. To suffer, suffer everywhere, and not a moment stop to think, let the world go on without me. The next life will find me happy and adrift, peddling the swans, some bright day the sun names the boats, 
one by one in the marina. This will have been so long ago by then, and I will have missed you for so long. Will I have missed you?